We are grouped. Oh yes, this was something that at this point I had legitimately kind of resigned myself to not ever happening. James Gunn has been rehired by Marvel and Disney to make Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. <sighs> okay, slight recap on the off chance that people don't know what the heck went down in the first place. So, James Gunn is a filmmaker um, and has been for a while. He came up in the late 90s as part of Troma, which is very much not only schlock, but shock cinema. That's kind of their whole thing. And he wrote, and more recently, what he's most famous for now, is both writing and directing Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. And he was all set to start working on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He had actually finished the script and had gotten approved, and they were about to start pre-production when there was basically a, it turned out in hindsight to be a fairly organized and targeted and very specifically motivated group of people who went back through his social media feed, dug up stuff from years, it might have even been like a decade ago. It was like a long, years and years ago, um, where he made jokes about rape and pedophilia and things of that nature. Uh, and they then stirred up a controversy, and in the wake of that, Disney cut him loose. And since then, the movie Guardians of the Galaxy 3 has kind of been in a limbo state. Now, there were calls to rehire James Gunn almost immediately once it became clear that this was very much a hit job and how dated these things were, and the fact that James Gunn has never been... Um, implicated in any kind of actual CDs going on, what he did was make very bad jokes about it that were, while I'm not going to defend those jokes, they're not good jokes, they're not funny, but they were very much in keeping with the persona and artistic stamp he had at the time that he made him. As I said, the guy came up in trauma. Trying to be a provocateur was what he tried to have his brand be for a while, something that he eventually grew out of, and he was very upfront. He never defended these statements, and I think that's that's one of the reasons that people continued to be on his side um, for quite for quite a while um, because. He was never defensive about this. He never lashed out at Disney. He never even got um, derogatory towards the people that dug this stuff up. He said, look, yes, this was stuff that I said. It was inappropriate, but I did say it. And if people feel I shouldn't be here because I said that stuff a while ago, okay. And that was pretty much how he handled it, which I think that incredibly high level of professionalism is probably a big part of why Disney has finally been able to um, to pull him back in. Now, if the if if you have the question, why didn't they rehire him as soon as it became clear that the quote unquote controversy was stirred up in a very insincere way, and their and most reasonable people most reasonable people wouldn't wouldn't be upset with him continuing to work there. Well, that had mostly to do with um, corporate image, both of Disney as a brand and internally. Initially, he was fired because it was feel it was worried that he was damaging to the brand of Marvel and Disney. But when it became clear that, well, no, none of this is new. This was all stuff that Disney and Marvel already knew when they hired him to do the first Guardians. Because, um, I mean, I can't imagine he wasn't vetted. So they all knew this and they knew it was far enough in the past. But as soon as stuff got stirred up, they cut him loose. But the reason they didn't bring him back right away was because of basically the default internal logic and sort of handling of things that corporate executives executives have, which is if a mistake is made, you you if you're the one who makes a mistake, you do not reverse it. If somebody else makes a mistake and you have the power to reverse it, okay, that's fine. But you reverse your own mistake, even if you know it's a mistake, it makes you look weak. And so it just standard corporate culture said that it was very unlikely that he was going to be hired back. Now, as I said, the movie had been in a state of limbo for a while because um, 
It took a little while before this happened, but Kevin Feige did eventually say that they were going to keep James Gunn's script, but that they were still trying to find a director. And there had really been no word on that at all. There were rumors. The big one was uh, was people rumoring that Taika Waititi, who directed Thor Ragnarok, would take over. It turned out to be absolutely no substance to that rumor whatsoever, but it was a logical thing because his sort of uh, approach to Marvel as a property was not excessively dissimilar from Gunn. So, but there, there really was nothing concrete. And Gunn himself, I mean, it felt like a done deal when Gunn himself started booking other gigs. He's currently attached, he's working on right now, Suicide Squad 2. So with all that in place, it seemed like, well, they're never gonna get James Gunn back. And actually, so I completely resigned myself to that. And I had kind of thought to myself, you know, there's a pretty good chance this movie just never happens. Because they won't, find a director willing to take it on because either uh, they, you know, they won't be able to get a director of note with vision because nobody will want to come in and do what was very clearly supposed to be James Gunn's movie, especially because they're going to, you know, get a ton of crap for whatever they do. And Disney, you know, say what you will about who they hire and how they handle things with Marvel. They, for the most part, they don't hire hacks. And that's the only kind of director who would come in and take over this project, and they don't really go there. So I was starting to think that the movie was just never going to happen. And now it's back. And that is confirmed. That's not rumor, it's back. It actually turns out that this move has been in the works for uh, a month, possibly a couple. Um, so they have been quietly working behind the scenes at getting things re-implemented and getting him lined up again, which... The impression, this isn't confirmed, at least as of time of recording, the impression I get is that Kevin Feige has probably been quietly behind the scenes trying to move the pieces in such a way that he could get James Gunn back, probably since this entire thing went down, and has just been very strategic about it. It's actually kind of surprising to see, especially in these days when... Uh, the term, you may have heard this term, negotiating in the press is kind of a big thing, which is where actors or directors or whatever sort of basically say what they wish was happening through interviews or open letters or whatever um, to make it more public and use that as leverage. In fact, the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy themselves actually did that. Dave Bautista being the most vocal, say, you know, saying, we want these people back. And he said flat out, if they get another director, I'm going to see if there's some way I can get out of my contract. So that's that sort of negotiating in the press is is kind of becoming standard operating procedures. So the fact that they reinstated him as quietly as they did, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Now, if you're wondering, when does this happen? Not for a little while, because um, James Gunn is not leaving Suicide Squad 2 in order to make Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. He's still going to make Suicide Squad 2. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be the next thing that he makes, and he should be able to jump into it pretty quickly because, as I said, script's already done. So he doesn't have to do the early development stuff. And depending on how much sort of early pre-production, pre-vis or whatever kind of work had been done um, at the time he was fired, that may be able to start picking up again um, basically in his absence. And so it, the ball can already be rolling as soon as he's fresh off of uh, Suicide Squad 2. And... This honestly is, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just a relief because the whole situation was very strange and it, it, it was strange when it happened and then it was frustrating how it was playing out and it was looking like it was going to end up ultimately being because James Gunn, as I said, was incredibly gracious. He wasn't publicly angry. I wouldn't, I mean, if he was also privately not angry, then man, <laughs> better person than I am. But he certainly wasn't publicly lashing out, which I think most people would have. He wasn't even being defensive. You know, he let the fact that these statements were, that these statements that got dug up were as old as they were, and from a time where, at the time he said them, that was his public persona. And he kind of let the facts speak for themselves. And just 
went about his thing. And, but not in a way that made it seem like he didn't care, but just, well, that's a shame. And he moved along. And I think it says a lot about his uh, strength of character, that he was able to do that. And another thing about it that that is relieving to me, um, because one of the things that, that I, I mean, this was by far not the biggest issue with Disney firing him and not hiring him back once the, the details of what went down became clearer, but it, it sort of was in play and it did frustrate me, is if um, people felt it was truly justified where that stuff that he had said uh, that long ago was worth um, his firing from something now when that has not been his public persona in a very long time. It creates a culture that discourages personal growth because what's the point in growing and changing and evolving if you are forever going to be held to account for something that you said. Again, said, not action, not thing he did, but bad jokes, in poor taste jokes that he made years ago. If you're forever going to be held to account for that, why would you ever try and be a better person? Because no one's ever going to treat you like you are. And like I said, that's far from the biggest issue, but speaking as someone who has um, benefited a lot in my life from people willing to extend me some benefit of the doubt despite my own past screw-ups, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of important to feel like you have the room to change in that if you do, people will accept that. So as much as this whole situation was ridiculous, I don't like that it happened, I don't like that it dragged out for as long as it did, we ultimately are going to get the conclusion that I didn't dare to hope for, which we, which is we're going to get the final installment of this story from the guy who should be making it and who I think has more than earned the right to make it. And, um, yeah. This was, um, this was a welcome piece of good news on a day that did not have, um, a lot of good news. And this, you know, it, sometimes it's hard for me to make these videos, you know, knowing, um, other stuff that's going on in the world outside of the stuff that I talk about. And I don't, I, oh God, why am I doing this? I don't want to, I don't want to derail, but I, I feel there's a part of me that, that just feels the need to acknowledge that, like, I do know, um, what else is going on. I know what happened in New Zealand and this by no means suddenly makes this a great day in history that this news broke, uh, on the same day, but it, uh, it was a boost, and it was nice to get. Um, and it's silly. And in the grand scheme of things, it's stupid and it's superficial, and it in no way um, can make up for other things that are going on. But it's a bit of good news that I didn't think uh, I'd ever see or have. And it made my day a little better. And I don't know if I've just brought everybody down. This thing got set. What? Where? I think I'm, I'm just in a weird headspace today. I don't know where, like, the whole serious mood came in and why it stayed or what. Anyway, James Gunn is going to direct the third Guardians of the Galaxy. Holy crap. Oh, I got to go to bed. That's what I gotta do. What do you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. A whole bunch of stuff to do. Buttons, links, Patreon, Amazon wishlist is down there because my birthday is coming up pretty dang soon, a little bit later this month. There's a P.O. box. There's other stuff to check out. Give it all a look or don't. It is totally fine if you don't click on any of it, folks, because you're not obligated. You're the council. I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.